Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is an update video as uh, there's been a lot that has come out over the past month, um, but it was right during the time that I was moving so I wasn't able to get around to it. Uh, we have the audio uh, video that came out and then we have the airports uh, that was part of that feature discovery and I will have those linked in the description below. I implore you to go check those out. You're going to get so much out of those videos um, that I am cutting here today. Since we're just looking at the goodies, uh, we'll have some sound bites today and we're going to go through like we normally do and break down any video that we have um, on the flight simulator. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, audio technologies. We have new audio engine based on the audio kinetic wise system here, the wise engine. And they're going to show you a little bit of what that is right here. We're seeing a, a graphic of um, uh, how they're changing the parameters and all that stuff. But uh, right after this, we get into something really, really cool. And that is explaining that the audio has access to all simulation variables. That's insane. That's everything the sim has to offer uh, can have a sound basically attached to it. And we're going to see uh, that you're getting a dynamic and breathing soundscape because of those technologies. Uh, I've got to say that is mind blowing. You're going to hear some awesome, awesome stuff here. They're showing you some of the uh, variables here that you can change. So the aircraft recording process, aircraft are accurately recorded in real life. Now we've talked about previous, uh, previously in other videos, that partnership they have with the, the manufacturers. And that makes a huge difference because now they can go in, they can record them on site. You're going to have 3D directive audio with 16 channels for accurate cockpit and external views. I think it's amazing uh, what you're about to hear because the soundscape of this out of the box is way beyond anything we've seen before. I don't know about you, but when that A320neo started winding its engines up, uh, that put a big smile on my face. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, considering that that is something that we're getting just right out of the box in the simulator, uh, it's just so cool. So I think we're on the ramp here at San Francisco. That seems to be uh, one of the main focuses they use uh, here, showing off the sounds. Um, and uh, we start off with the TBM. And we're going to walk around. We'll, we'll just kind of scrub through it today. And we're going to see um, what we might miss, you know, as the video plays through. And basically do a trailer breakdown like we've always done or a video breakdown. That's kind of what this is. Uh, so as we are uh, rotating around, we're seeing back there, we've got some, uh, you know, various uh, airport equipment. You got stairs, K loaders, and uh, GPUs, you name it. Very nice. I like the, the, the clouds in the sky back there. Um, go to the right a little bit more here and we start seeing here on the left that blue uh that blue long truck there is a huge pushback um that you would normally see like pushing out like a 747 or something so that's really cool behind here we're seeing a glimpse of it looks like an ai tbm that's sitting over there on the ramp maybe it's just uh for show but i have a feeling that all the planes that we're seeing out here are going to be ai and we'll we'll see that later on down the road when we get into the airports this is the Diamond 42. Uh, it looks like it's in the same area. And uh, they are just uh, running the engines up here, uh, as you can see. And uh, we have a yellow set of stairs out here now. So I don't know if they're going to have um, stairs for the different, uh, you know, make-believe airlines like Landmark and World Travel and things. But that's something that I noticed immediately is that, uh, you know, that's yellow. So that's cool. It's something different. Uh, and it flies by here. And we go over this way. 
you can see how awesome uh, the graphics are in this sim. Whenever we rotate it around the nose, you're seeing the change there with the light right there. You can see the sun just barely, barely, barely gleaming right over the uh, nose cone there of the Diamond 42. Around it, we go. We see the, uh, the landing lights. The landing lights still seem a little uh, overpowered in the daytime, but honestly, a landing light is, is going to be bright regardless. It just seems like it's a little, uh, a little too high, if you ask me. Jumping on the inside view here. Uh, this is cool. Now we can see even more of what's going on. And look, we've got buses out here. Uh, and we've got two yellow ones and a white one. So maybe uh, the airlines will actually have their own buses. Don't know. Um, and we're going to see that later on when we get into the airport section of the new ground service vehicles uh, and how those interact with your airplane. So that's something to watch for sure. Over here, looks like a K-loader or something over there. I'm not really sure what that is. It kind of looks like a K-loader to me. Um, that you would use for a cargo airplane, but uh, not sure. Clearly, this is San Francisco with the uh, the uh, mountain range right there. I believe it is, and you can clearly see right there on the right. I just noticed on the uh, the map, you can see where they're at. They're facing uh, to the south uh, west of that runway. Looking at the uh, two eights there, so that's pretty cool. That's the big huge hangar where um, uh, was it United did their seven four seven maintenance and all that. Uh, going over here, we go to this, uh, before we get to that, we looked over here to the right and we're seeing another one of those, uh, which appear to be a K loader to me. It looks like it could be a catering truck, but seeing those cross members there, that looks like a K loader to me. And, uh, that's really cool. Look at the amount of vehicles on the ramp. That is, that is something to uh, behold. So here we are looking at the A320 Neo, a nice cool shot here uh, from the back while we were listening to them wind those engines up. And we noticed um, when he adds the power, watch that nose, you know, going down like that. That is so cool how they have the parking brake set. But when he adds that power, you're seeing that nose just jump straight on down in there. Uh, and then we can see uh, the beacon light flash. Uh, and I could say the beacon light flash seems a little slow um, for this particular type of airplane. Uh, we talked about it before and it looked like it was giving us a, uh, you know, like a light up uh, this kind of has more of a rotation feel to it rather than like a LED. Uh, here we are looking at a Cessna 172 SP. Not sure what airport we're at here, but we have a little uh, you know, little commuter airplane or something over here with the white and blue and uh, red. And I've got to say, that is kind of interesting because does that mean that World Travel and all of them are now going to have their own commuter lines or their own regional airlines that are a, uh, you know, like a, a smaller part of them. Perhaps that is the case. I don't know. That is absolutely speculation, but we're seeing in that build that they're using there uh, that we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of AI traffic and that is absolutely awesome. Uh, you can see the tower right there. And then behind there, we've got a little bit of a wall. This looks like it might be in Renton. I think this is in Renton there, a uh, little home uh, turf. That's what it looks like to me, but man, look how beautiful that SP looks uh, in the sun. That is gorgeous. You see the PBR, you see how those reflections look, and then bam, we're right to this part. So I'm going to go ahead and play this so you can listen to the sounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and rewind it back. We heard the sounds there, uh, and you're noticing that we have audio uh, based on the control surfaces changing and moving around. And even when you're outside of the airplane, you're going to hear that. That's uh, absolutely realistic sounding. We're seeing the uh, X-Cub here sitting on the ramp. Uh, and you can see how uh, beautiful that is. What a cool airplane. And look at the animation there of the flaps coming down. That uh, is fantastic. Here we are, the 172 SP. Uh, again, looking, it looks like we're in Renton here, looking on uh, runway 34. And uh, they're going to bring the flaps down. Now, I can tell you, um, I've got a lot of time with 172s, uh, and that is, that is spot on how those uh, flaps come down. That looks really, really, really good. We're going to rock it here. There we go. Kind of like a boomerang. Yep. That's what they say. Uh, and then we've got the TBM and you can see how that comes down and look at how it raises up over and then down again. That is so cool. I don't know where this is located at. This is somewhere else. Look at the style of tower we have here. And Look at the mountain range back there. Very impressive. And then we're seeing some things uh, 
that we have been calling simisms uh, as we go through here. And nothing is perfect. They're not throwing any wool over your eyes uh, with the, the what they're showing you here. So we're seeing the reflection. Uh, and you can see the anti-aliasing on the reflection is not, you know, stellar. It's, it doesn't look realistic or anything. But uh, you know what? Perhaps those are going to be options we can change uh, and, and try to get those better. Who knows? I'm, I really don't know. Um, but I like seeing these kind of things because it goes, bam, okay, yes. We are still very much looking at a simulator. Sometimes it looks real, but in this case, uh, a sim. So aircraft recording process, they finish things out by saying they, acoust they have acoustic recording of each cockpit thanks to convolution. Uh, they go into detail about convolution. You can uh, pay attention to that. And basically, uh, you're going to be able to hear um, all these audio clickings and, and everything based on where you're at in the airplane. Changes the, the sound uh, detail of it. So I'm going to go ahead and play some of that so you can hear it. And that's pretty much that. We get this beautiful shot of the 172 SP uh, flying over who knows where. Um, but uh, you're getting a nice long shot. Let's go back before we get into the Doppler stuff. Um, a nice long shot here of it at altitude. And uh, you can see the clouds. Uh, you get a good glimpse of uh, what the cloud shadows look like. Uh, you can see this one has got a, a lot more uh, precipitation or something going on in here that has it uh, changing that color. Uh, than some of these others, but uh, look at the massive cloud shadow. It is leaving below it. Pretty darn impressive right there. And we're seeing some more of what the sky textures actually look like. Here's something really cool. You're seeing the reflection underneath the wings of that 172. Just a beautiful shot nonetheless. Um, and I've got to say, you know, looking at it from here, the ortho uh, that we're seeing on the ground there doesn't... Um, doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, like a max detail or anything like that. It could be the 1080p compression, uh, honestly. But we're seeing out here these colors, uh, particularly out towards the mountains and stuff. Uh, we're starting to see, like, things that we would see in other ortho products. So it seems like they're using the ortho tiles that, uh, you know, we already know they're getting them from, getting them from Bing. Um, but it looks like they're still going to have to um, uh, combat some of the things uh, that uh, we have seen in other ortho products. But let's get back to the, the main focus here, the sound. Uh, the attenuation and Doppler effect, they have re basically redone that. So they have accurate sound attenuation and sound reflections. What is that? Well, you got to hear it to believe it. Right, and there is an a or, or, there's a Neo A320 Neo taken off in San Francisco. Let's go ahead and back things up here. We have a, something new to see. Uh, so we're looking at uh, this little lake here, and we're listening to that Doppler effect of an airplane way off in the distance, and that is really, really, really neat. I love that. Uh, and we're hearing that lapping water sound effect. Um, so all of your environment has sound, and uh, look at the. Uh, the shadows there along the bank. That looks really nice. Uh, over here, that looks a little plain Jane out in the distance, but um, wow, just wow. <laughs> uh, what, a, what a beautiful shot of that plane flying by there. And then we jump over to this one, and again at San Francisco. And then we move on to this beautiful shot of the A320 taken off of San Francisco. Uh, and here's something that's really cool that caught my eye. Uh, that is, this uh, particular airport seems to be uh, one, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but it seems to be one of their uh, detailed airports that they're building because if you look at the San Francisco Tower, that is just like the real tower. So I think that that's what the case is here um, with San Francisco. And we've seen that in previous videos. I just wanted to show you that. Look how beautiful that is. Wow, wow, wow. But we move on to this part here. So they want you to hear the sound of um, the impact of hitting the ground, uh, and the difference between a hard landing and a soft landing. All 
All right, so then we get to this part. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll rewind it back here, and we can see uh, that they are not the greatest pilot in the world, the one that's landing here. Uh, this one purposely, you know, hitting the ground, maybe purposely, uh, but still way left of the center line here. Uh, and then the same thing happening here. So I'm uh, not sure what was going on with uh, that pilot that particular day, but we can definitely hear the difference between uh, the two impact sounds. That one uh, compared to the nice, you know, easy touchdown sound. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. You can see how the nose moves around when it touches down. That's actually, well, you'll see it here on the impact, but we'll slow the impact down a little bit here. As we get to it, we can actually go through each frame of it. And boom, there it is. We're seeing that uh, camera, you know, head shake effect happen there as the uh, impact happens. The g-force change we're seeing it whip back again like that uh, so that is very prevalent uh, based on how hard you're hitting the ground because when we hit the ground here it does rattle you see it move just a little bit but nothing like when they just smashed straight into the runway all right so we move on to this section here and this is uh showcasing the sound of the control services and the environment as well. All right, before we get to the world and weather soundscape, <laughs> <laughs> so we we get that awesome shot of the uh, cub, you know, uh, just throwing that stick around so you can hear it. Uh, looks like there's somewhere in uh, Seattle. It looked like, not sure. Um, but uh, wow, really nice uh, scenery there. You could see the uh, the clouds. I love seeing you know the upper atmosphere clouds and how they stretch out, and they're just so randomly different. It looks so good. Um, let's move on to this. This is somebody in the 172 SP with the G1000 package, and they're doing uh, what appears to be a spin. So they get into that, uh, they get into the stall, and then really whip it over. Now, one thing you're going to notice immediately is look at the lighting here when they're looking at the sun, and look at the change of when you look away from the sun and the glare that is on the inside of that uh, windshield. That is awesome looking. So they get into that uh, spin. Uh, and, uh, basically they don't let it spin. They, they, they get it out of there, but, uh, not without letting this thing nose dive like a Stuka here. We had a hundred and almost 150 there. Uh, and then we're going to get into the barber pole. There it is. Over speed, uh, 170, 188. We did hit one hundred and eighty eight knots on 172. I mean, soon as we're pulling back here. Those wings are gone, baby. Those wings are gone. So clearly the uh, aircraft stress uh, was not on during this demonstration uh, as far as we can tell. Uh, not sure where they're located out here, but it looks like they're just to the north of Renton, uh, still in the Seattle area for the most part uh, from what we can tell. But uh, that's that's really nice looking. And um, it's like what some of the, the people that went to uh, Renton for that that whole social media thing said that the Seattle area is really, really well done. It's one of those high detailed areas uh, rather than other places on the globe. Uh, and even if that's the case, I mean, look at this little, you know, uh, little subdivision here. Um, you got some tennis courts here in the pool. That is absolutely awesome looking. Look at the individual trees. And there's another, you know, it looks like a baseball field or something there. And then they got a bridge. Uh, going off into the distance there. I could just look at this stuff forever. And then, uh, yep, that's a uh, good old uh, Renton. So world in weather soundscape. What is that? Well, you're just going to have to hear it to understand. So keep in mind, say you land your airplane, you go taxi out uh, to a ramp, you shut down uh, and you're in your outside view. Um, this is what you hear.
There you have it. Wow, how beautiful does that sound? And what a difference that makes. Even with the sound of the, you know, the, the crickets chirping and stuff. We're going to get to that uh, little section there of the AI airplane taxi. And the first time we get to see one of the AI airplanes, we're going to back things up and just look at the, uh, you know, the, the scenery itself uh, in the middle of nowhere, basically. Um, and we're noticing something here, and that's the grass. Uh, the, the size, of, you know, the blade size of this individual grass seems to be the same in all these shots we're going to see. Um, trees are different. Uh, one thing you'll notice is based on that, you know, wherever you are in the world, it seems that it is slightly different. So it's not like a generic sound of this everywhere you go. You get, you know, this. Um, but yeah, look at the uh, the size of these uh, these blades of grass. They all look to be about the same as these. Um, but we're in a field and we can see these uh, coniferous trees and they're all, you know, kind of piled in one spot. We're starting to see some blocky uh, sensations happening. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, but this blocky kind of feel, um, happening in a group of trees over here. Um, and, uh, perhaps that is just something like an LOD issue or something. We don't know, but moving down here, I mean, a beautiful morning. This is something that you would see in like a hunting simulator. You know, this is, uh, not something you would see in a flight simulator out of the box. Uh, I've got to say, so I don't care about how big these blades of grass seem, uh, to be. The fact that they're there, it's amazing in itself. And uh, we're seeing, as we go to this next shot, uh, the difference. Look at that. And I love looking at these clouds whenever the sun comes up and just lights them up. And there it is. Boom. It is a new day. You can see uh, right here, you're starting to see these clouds. And look, especially right here, we're going to see this cloud. It's not really going to kind of shape around and over this. It looks like it's actually going through the top of that mountain there. Um, and that's something that we've seen in a lot of simulators. Every simulator seems to have a puff of cloud that, um, either goes through a mountain or, uh, it just lays on top of them weirdly. I don't know. I've, I've seen how it looks in real life. Um, and, and that's pretty darn close. I mean, I'm not nitpicking it. I'm just saying, uh, that especially there, you're starting to see like that whole thing where it looks like, uh, it's just kind of cloud kind of clipping through the mountain there rather than, uh being part of the environment. Here's a nice, beautiful long shot. Oh, uh, we see those high uh, cirrus clouds, or I'm not sure what those ones are, maybe ultra cirrus or something, but the sun's going down. We're hearing that soundscape change to the nighttime, hearing crickets and frogs and you name it. So we get this shot here. This is a shot in San Francisco, and uh, you can see they're all running down to the runway 28, uh, and the, the two eights, I must say. Uh, but here's a look at the early AI airplanes. First time we've seen one so far. It looks like an A330 and a 767 meshed together uh, for the most part. And I don't know what colors those are. Of course, these, you know, could be um, placeholders, to be honest with you. Could be placeholders. They don't seem to say world travel or anything on them. So uh, I would say that they're just placeholders for now. We don't know. This is really cool because we're going to hear the sound of uh, the wind when they mess around with the wind here, but I want you to pay attention to the waves out here around one nine left. This is absolutely amazing what we're about to see. How cool is that? We'll get to this in just a second, but uh, you're seeing right when he changes that wind, boom, look at the change. Between 20 knots and 50 knots, look at the change of the swells, uh, and then boom, even higher. And those things are whipping. You see white caps on them. That is beautiful. That's something that kind of reminds me of like seeing in a submarine simulator or something. The good old uh, Silent Hunter games. Moving on, let's go to this shot here. I'm going to let you just listen here. Uh, this is the sound of the rain and its effect on this 172 SP. There you go. There you go. Before we get to the airports, how amazing is that? We're seeing a 172 SP sitting here 
uh, at the threshold of a runway, uh, and it is pouring rain, and we're getting a nice glimpse of what really low visibility looks like, especially inside of it here. I love the attention to detail on the uh, rain. The rain looks absolutely brilliant on the windscreen. You can see the change there, and look at that. You have a little, what we called them when we were younger, but the ducks, like the little, uh, you know, impacts of each uh, the impact of each raindrop hitting the ground outside beyond the scope. So if you didn't pay attention to that, you'll see them right there as I scroll. How cool is that? And we saw it out here too, if you pay attention. Uh, not as prevalent because it's very dark out. But here we definitely see it happening. That is really cool. And then we get this awesome, awesome shot of a lightning strike. Uh, we see a plane in the distance there. As well, there's his uh, beacon, but we'll we'll play that one more time. Thank you. That sounds great. So, bam is the lightning strike. Lightning strike seems a little long. It does seem a little long. It's if that was just a little bit quicker, man, that would uh, that would you you could throw me a loop on that one. I would think that was a real shot. And look at the white caps on the water there as that storm is moving forward. Looking menacing. Very cool stuff. That's the soundscapes in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now we move on to the airport section. This is uh, the new video that came out. Uh, clearly, here we are in LA. This is like LAX off the runway uh, 24 left. Uh, you can see the A320 Neo taxiing in, and uh, we can see just how beautiful it is. We know it's LAX because look at this over here. We got the LAX little, uh, uh, what do you call that, archways happening over there, and the tower, of course. but. Perhaps LAX is another one of those airports that is uh, part of um, the high-end ones. But look at this. We can see this uh, A320. Um, for some weird reason or another, as he's taxiing out, he's going to hit his reversers. And you're going to see those buckets opening up right there. And then they stow them. This is a good shot here of the uh, lighting. So the beacon. Pretty fast. It looks way quicker in this shot than what we saw uh, before, so maybe that's something they have been improving. Uh, is the airplane night lighting? Uh, moving on to the next shot here, but before we do that, I know, I know, I want to see it too. Um, over here we have yellow airplanes, yellow airplanes. I'm seeing these yellow airplanes, and then we got white and green or something here. Maybe the yellow airplanes. This is like a spirit uh, style looking uh, color. We saw those yellow buses, so I'm th I am thinking that those buses have something to do with the um the actual airlines that they uh, are with. So airport coverage, the airport treatment pipeline is what they're calling this thing. Uh, airport life. This is a big one. This is a big one. Airport coverage. We're just going to play this through and then we'll come back through it again. Uh, so all airports on earth, including 37,000 manually edited, edited airports. Now, 37,000, I've seen some people in the comments below on this video say, well, that's not a lot of airports and all stuff, but Honestly, if you're you're manually editing every single airport on the earth, 37,000 is a lot. That's a big number, um, and it will only improve as time goes on. I really like uh, the fact that now they are telling us what airports they're showcasing to you. That is something that it wasn't uh, in their previous videos. Now they're starting to show you, hey, this is not even going to uh, butcher that name, uh, airfield in Hungary. And you can see runway 34 here. You can see it's a grass strip. Got a 172 out there. Beautiful. Uh, looks like sunrise or, well, let's see. Yeah, north as a sun set because it's off to the west. Um, happening there. And look at the clouds lighting up in the distance. Just brings me so much joy to see all these different, uh, different um, landscapes. Moving into this shot, JFK, John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. So they're showcasing us right now these uh, high quality, these highly detailed airports that they're going to be um, giving us. So looks like JFK. Looks like these all are making the cut. So you've got this shot here of one. You got this one and JFK, and we can see a seven four seven eight. Uh, looks like he's on his landing rollout uh, in the distance there. And look at that beautiful rainbow. How pretty is that? And we got uh, rain out in the distance there. Here's another look at the. AI airplanes and they're, you know, they're, I think they're placeholders because we don't see any uh, insignias of, um, you know, an airline or something. So we got blue and 
and green and black and gray and very modern looking, looks very cool, um, but nothing being given away there. Uh, I like this shot because you can see the change, uh, the difference in the clouds. And you'll notice that in a lot of these different shots, you're getting different clouds um, based on that type of weather there is that day. So I think there's a lot more uh, than we have seen so far as far as, you know, the type of clouds that are available uh, in the sim. So there's a 747 landing rolling out. We go to the next shot. We're in Aspen, Pitkin County Airport. This is cool because, hello, we're looking at snow. This is something that uh, I didn't notice the first time I made a pass through on it. Um, but we're also starting to see something different. Uh, we're seeing a uh, TBM here, which is like an AI one. And then this guy here looks like it is a, let's zoom back a little bit here. It's twin prop, so it looks kind of like an EMB-120 they're using there, doesn't it? Just a little bit, uh, I noticed. So maybe that's going to be in the plane. I, be a, that's going to be in the sim. Man, this, is, this has been a long one. This has been a long one today. Uh, and then we've got this little business jet here. So it doesn't look like the Citation we've seen. It looks like a Learjet, honestly. Or it could be a, a commuter airplane. We don't know. But uh, you are also going to see down here at the bottom right, got this guy walking. And look at the animation of him walking. That looks really good. Really, really good. And I love that Aspen's going to be a, uh, a detailed airport. That looks awesome. Look at the snow. Um, just can't wait to do that. Here's good old Saba in the Netherlands. Uh, you know, we've got uh, St. Martin over there. You got St. Bart's. And here is Saba and, or Saba as they call it. Some people do. Here it is, though, and it looks like it's very, very detailed. Uh, you got little villages up here. Um, so that's going to be something to watch for. Look at the uh, cliffs. You know, that's, that's amazing. That's not something you're going to see uh, with some of these other airports. I've noticed that the, this is the best-looking cliffs I've seen in the sim so far. So knowing it's a detailed airport, uh, look at what, you know, is possible, basically, with the SDK. So we get this shot here of LAX looking back at downtown LA out in the distance. And here we are greeted with those yellow airplanes again. I don't know who that's going to be or what it is going to be, but we see them there. Um, and we got a tail of a bigger airplane there. But a beautiful shot there of LAX. Moving on to the next shot, we've got uh, Courcheville, France. Uh, and we see a DR, uh, a Robin out there on the runway ready for takeoff. But look at the water reflections here. Look at the cliffs. Look at those clouds. These, this looks w like mountain clouds, way more than the ones we saw before where they're kind of clipping through and stuff. So we don't know what versions uh, that they're showing us of their builds. Um, we just know that, uh, you know, that looks good compared to the ones we saw before. All right, so this one is really neat. It's in Peoria. Before we get to Donegal here, let's back it up a little bit. Uh, Peoria in Illinois. And... Uh, it's going to be a detailed airport. How cool is that? Very random, very different. Look at the clouds in the background. That looks very nice. I love the color near that river. That might be the Mississippi. I don't know. Um, but as we are moving towards here, you're going to notice we don't have any cars on the road down here. We can see that the ortho scenery is here, uh, and those are cars on the actual you know, highway there, but uh, they're not moving at all in that shot that I can see. But a beautiful... A uh, little cutout there. You can see the 3D trees uh, following that exit ramp. That looks really nice. Moving to the next shot, we are in Donegal, Ireland. This is a cool shot because, A, we're seeing a storm out in the distance. We're seeing the beach here, and you're seeing some, you know, rock cliff faces here. Wow, that looks good. And then the, you know, the change that we're seeing from the... Uh, the storm rolling in. Look at the white caps out there on the ocean. That looks absolutely amazing. You see it. Look at that movement on them. If we rock it, you can start seeing that movement. Look at that. There we go. You can see it right there. Very nice. And I love that that lightning flash goes boom and it lights up the roof of this, the roof of this, the roof of this. Oh, yeah. That is super, super neat. There's another shot of a business jet. Looks like we have a 172 SP. That looks like the citation. Uh, that they have shown us in previous videos. I think that's what that one is right there. But uh, 
Cool. We're going to have Donegal, Ireland. Uh, Queenstown in New Zealand. New Zealand's such a beautiful place to fly. Uh, and we see a A320 Neo taking off, barely making the end of that runway, but he's taking off. Um, and then we can see that, uh, I think it's the Cap 10 right there. And then some others. These are unknown to me. This looks like an EMB 120 for the most part. And then like an ERJ or something. I, I don't know, but it could be a Learjet. We don't know. We haven't been showing those airplanes yet, but man, look at that. He barely makes it, barely <laughs> makes it off the end of that runway. He's in all of the runway that they have there. Anything else in the background? Not nah, that I'm noticing just a pretty airport. Very cool. Uh, good old St. Bart's. Now they haven't shown the, you know, the mountain behind runway 10 there. Uh, but looking at the rest of the topography of the area, I'm pretty sure they got that nailed. And this looks awesome. We got a little forklift hanging out here. Got the caravan taken off. All really, really neat stuff. Okay, moving on to the next, we've got uh, this one. Chiquitos Airport, Santa Cruz in Bolivia. Uh, and that is pretty amazing because we're starting to see these uh, palm trees. And I, I haven't seen a whole lot of palm trees. I have seen them in, uh, in the previous videos and stuff, but nothing like this. This looks like a jungle here we're seeing for the first time. Uh, and that looks really, really cool. A remote strip out in the middle of nowhere. Pretty neat. And then we got Morocco here. Uh, and we got the first glimpse of these guys in their different colors. And their A320 Neos that are not in the A320 Neo livery. So that's what we've been seeing. There's that yellow guy. And then we have this one here. Very, very, very cool stuff. Uh, and we got a bunch of airport vehicles on the ground as well. So here is the Maldives. And I love this shot. It's very short, but you're seeing it. Uh, the reason why I like it so much is because you can see the mask right here on the Maldives. And the Maldives are those little tiny islands out in the middle of nowhere, man-made. Uh, and you can see here just how amazing those masks look. Uh, that seems like it's going to be a lot of fun to fly into that airport. Uh, so then we are greeted with the airport treatment pipeline, airport database based on FSX, then increase. So they got the database from FSX and then they built it from there. Now we're going to get a bunch of different airport. Uh, just going to shoot through them here. Um, you're going to see the different tiles and just a different quality of all the different airports. And you're seeing here, we've got, uh, you know, I'm going to back it up a little bit here and you'll see that they're dealing with that whole thing of, uh, you know, ortho scenery showing a line here. Uh, and this one's like, you know, a total different color than this side. Is that something they're going to, you know, have to fix? Perhaps, uh, don't know, but they're showing it to you here that, um, you know, there's, they're not hiding anything. This looks like it's just showing you, Hey, you know, you're dealing with ortho scenery. Uh, you get what you get for the most part. And we even see some of the fake clouds and some of the ortho as well. Um, let it move on. Through the rest of these, you're going to see those lines that I was talking about, the difference in the uh, ortho quality. That was LAX. Actually, that one there looks like Cincinnati. Or that could be... Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. We will have to see. So we're stepping through all these different airports. They're just showing it off. They're like, hey, we have a ton of airports. You know, we talked about the 37,000. Uh, and then they've, uh, you know, they're, they're doing their detailed airports. So they're going to have tools for creation uh, for us. And this is the first time they're going to show them to us. And I got to say, it looks pretty darn good as it is. Because we're seeing these uh, airports like this. So if you go on Google Earth or, or whatever... You're going to see airplanes on the runways, on the taxiways, on the ramps. So they're going to show you how they remove that. Um, granted, you know, that's going to be based on uh, third-party work. So third-party developers, people like you and me, uh, will be able to use these tools and we can, you know, fix our home airports. Basically, it kind of seems what they're showing here is, hey, you know what? We can't get to every single airport on Earth. Um, but if you want to, here you go. Here's a cool shot. And I really like this one. It's different, um, because we're seeing that A330 slash 767 over here. And I want you to watch the, uh, double flash. Boom, boom. Just like that. And that's something I didn't see before, uh, was the double flash on an Airbus. And we know that's like an Airbus signature thing. Uh, and then the distance, you see the one, just one flash. 
out there. So maybe we're starting to see that change with the lighting. I don't know. Uh, Chicago O'Hare International Airport. Beautiful. We got runway 10 center here looking out and uh, they're showing us that, you know, basically the materials of the uh, runway are editable in this whole uh, editor they have here. So they're making changes to everything and they're going to show you how they're making taxiway nodes. Like if you've ever used AFCAD uh, before, you would know uh, what all that is in parking spots, but it's all editable. You can see where airplanes would be. So with the airport treatment pipeline, uh, you have three main steps to edit each airport. Tracing logical elements, defining surfaces, which we just saw that right here, they're doing it. They're tracing that out saying, hey, okay, that's a surface there. That's a different type of surface. You know, it's uh, grass. And then you can change right there. We're going to see that little drop down menu. Uh, you got asphalt, uh, bituminous, uh, cement, concrete, dirt, grass, gravel, macadam, plank, sand, tarmac, and water for what we can tell right there. So those are your surfaces. And you saw what he just did right there. Boom. Or she. But bam, they can change that on the fly of how it will be. So basically, it seems like what we're doing is we're tracing out uh, the ortho scenery and we're able to build our airports on top of that. Here we are working the outside of one of these, you know, airplanes that are sitting here on the ramp that you would not want to see in the sim. Uh, so it looks like you can just go boom, that's dirt. You can see they're clearly removing those out of the ortho uh, and then they're building materials on top of it. That is really, really cool. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this because uh, I, I love tinkering with this stuff. I like making, um, you name it, you know, uh, your own airport. You can, you know, fix your home airport, things like that. Alice Springs, Australia. Look how pretty that is. That is so cool. Uh, they're showing you here. This one I want to keep in because we get to hear a little bit more sound. Uh, and they're basically just showing you the wind socks at the airport and all the different, you know, uh, objects you can put out there. But I wanted to keep this in here so you can hear it. That's basically all the, the sound we had there. And then we are greeted with LAX at night uh, here. And the night lighting um, has been improved quite a bit over what we have seen in the previous uh, videos. It seems like they're starting to get that dialed in way, way more. Because sometimes those lights seem a little too bright. Uh, and here they look absolutely uh, spot on what you would see in the real world. Here's something to really, really point out. Look in the distance. Look at how long in the distance we can see these lights being lit up, these individual lights all the way out to the distance. That's something we've never seen in a sim before. You know, drawing distance on that uh, is something that just doesn't happen, and we're seeing it here. Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we got the uh, golf course here. Again, we're just showing off airports that they are, you know, working on uh, for high detailed uh, and making them, you know, as good as they can. Miami, clearly that, that doesn't look like a default airport. It's something that they are, you know, working on, um, which is really, really, really cool. I love that shot of Miami, uh, being a Florida native myself. Here's something I'm noticing out in the distance. Look at the difference between, uh, we've got here going on in the ortho and out in the distance. It seems to get a little bit blurry. That seems to be a LOD kind of thing. Uh, perhaps you can change those, um, settings. We don't know. We'll move on. Uh, from that to Gatwick in England, all of you that are in the UK, uh, will be excited to know that Gatwick will be one of those airports that they're working on. Uh, so it'll be high quality out of the box. Here's something cool though. We're seeing nighttime lighting, uh, on these individual, uh, ground vehicles. That is pretty darn cool. And we're seeing little, uh, beacon lights and red lights and all these different airplanes that are out here, uh, moving around. Airport treatment pipeline, specific treatment, most wanted airports, specific treatment, most iconic airports. So that's how they're deciding how they're going to do this uh, to make them really high quality. Uh, good old Brazil, uh, Rio de Janeiro. We got, look at that. You got these little individual towers out there. Just This is clearly a very, very detailed airport uh, that you wouldn't get out of the gate, basically. And uh, I think that's what they're getting at, uh, showing you that that's going to be one that's going to make it in. Uh, you can see an airplane departing off the end there, the right. And then we have this awesome shot of 
Blue Claw in Nepal, and this is such a neat airport. Look at the uh, detail in all of the mountains around here and uh, the village, and then there's that runway, that sloping runway that we've seen. Very iconic airport, very cool. That This one's going to be a high-quality airport as well. Here they're showing you, uh, looks like they're in 3DS Max, uh, messing around, building uh, different objects, and they're showing you here that these are all custom uh, objects they're working on for those airports, basically. And then here's, uh, again, Saba. Looks very, very nice, very different than... Uh, what we've seen in the past, those like solar rays or something there. Not really sure what those are. I'm already starting to lose my voice at the end of this thing. I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, airport life, ambient life. This is something that we saw. Uh, that's the people walking around, the vehicles. Very, very cool. I love this shot. It looks like we're in San Francisco, and we got an A320 sitting here and some others. Uh, I love the PBR. I love the material um, on the ground in the, the sun reflection of that. You see a little van. I love how he came to the line, the whole short line, and he's been given permission to cross, and here he goes. But very busy. Here's that yellow bus that we've been talking about. Here's cars using their, uh, you know, their, their lanes that they need to. Here's another shot of somebody walking by. So, yes, people will be walking around, and look at that in the, in the background. You're seeing that change of the uh, jetway as it moves away from the airplane. Very nice uh, animation. So, here we are given. The very first thing, showing us the new ground, uh, basically ground handling system. And now in Prepared, we've seen uh, GSX and all that, and everybody pretty much loves GSX. And so we're seeing that this is going to be something in uh, the simulator out of the box, which is amazing. You can request a pushback, fuel supply, power supply, baggage, catering, jetway connection, and you can go back to your clearance. So it looks like it's under uh, like a ground setting for what we're seeing there. So he's selecting that uh, based on that, requesting jetway disconnection. We're seeing just how detailed these jetways are, uh, and they look amazing. I must say, I remember even the ones in FSX weren't bad at all. Here's a cool shot of a baggage handler. You got a uh, belt loader pulled up there. There's that yellow A320 in the background. Uh, and then we've got some other, you know, various little vehicles in the background moving around. But we're seeing how fluid all this stuff works. There's the jetway come down. There's the little rain guard. And then he pulls up there. Here's another shot on the left side uh, of these animations. Looks like these animations might be a little quick. But you know what? I, I, that's something that you could probably change in, in the future. But this isn't final. You know, these are, these are uh, early builds that we're seeing here. Awesome shot here of that A330 slash 767. Looks more of an A330 there. Uh, but the nose of a 767 on that one for sure. Love that shot. A uh, little belt loader coming up here to meet. But this is built into the sim out of the gate. That's pretty impressive. This is very impressive stuff. We've got baggage handler moving over there. We got, a, you know, like, like a power cart uh, truck. There they are putting the bags in there. That's something that you see in, uh, you know, GSX. And you see that in uh, the jar design. Uh, ground handling deluxe. There's a fuel truck pulling up here. Look at the guy in the background moving around. Now, this is, it seems like it's all sped up on purpose um, for time, but I'm not sure. There's even a rotating beacon that's required on there. Now, here we are greeted with the fuel screen. First time we see this, uh, a fuel truck comes out, hooks up, and then says, hey, what do you want to do with the fuel? Now, we've seen this in add-ons for like X-Plane 11, some other stuff, um, but this is something really, really cool. I do like this a lot and we're seeing that you can change your uh, fuel when the truck comes up does this thing uh, and then he gets the heck on out of here here's a pushback pulling up to the airplane of course happening very quickly i think they speed these things up for the video itself uh, i don't think that you're going to push a a320 out that quick but very cool that we have working pushbacks like that here's a power uh, cart truck gpu hooked up at night look at the lighting on the side of the airplane uh from the the power cart itself really really Neat attention to detail. Uh, and there it is driving away. So basically showing you, hey, they've got GSX basically built into the sim. I think that's awesome. Here's a catering truck coming up here to the uh, rear door. And you can see that little thing all the way to the, <laughs> to the sill. That's so cool. So here we are giving a scenery editor 
Uh, looks like it says at the top left, dev mode, tools, camera options, windows, help. Uh, and then you have a scenery editor, objects and animations and all this all at your fingertips. You have waypoints for your people to walk to. Really cool. And they're showing you just how easy it is to, to make this uh, your own. So you can edit this stuff and do your own thing. You got worker, idle, add. And then look at this. In 3D, in real time, you're able to add these guys on the airport. That is so cool. So ambient life and services are things that have been covered. Uh, final thing, air traffic. And uh, speaks for itself. This is, uh, it finishes off the video with this awesome time lapse of all the traffic. Uh, and the AI traffic seems to be um, very fluid. It looks very nice. I, I like how it tracks the, the taxiways. Here's something you notice immediately is that this little A320 here sees this guy going down the road and he waits for him. See? And he's like, okay. And then he moves on. So they're intelligent. Uh, they definitely um, know what they're doing as far as that goes. So there you go. There's that A330 taxiing in. And uh, that is the end of the whole shabam. So very cool stuff uh, that we covered. If you saw something that I didn't, let me know in the comments below. Regardless, tell me what you thought. Uh, I'm super excited for this. Um, and we'll wait for the next video. Take care.